Hey, Richard Miller here with uh, the blog Fats Working People, and I haven't made a video in a while, but I wanted to start making some of these short ones. And this one, on this one, I want to talk to other workers about this, the whole question of the, the racism. How do you fight it? What it is? In a very, very brief amount of time, hopefully. But one thing that jumps out at me, and is is the fact that one of the reasons that identity politics is so dominant, is so oppressive in our society, is the lack and the driving backwards of the class consciousness of the American worker. Now, the post-war era had a lot to do with that, the conditions that led to the, uh, Amer the uh, American dream, the concept of the American dream, and so forth. But the thing is, is that there's, there's a, no doubt that the, there is a lack of um, working class people thinking of themselves as working class people. We don't even call ourselves in this country working class. It's generally middle class. That means working class. And so they, there's been a few centuries of, of, of a vicious assault and war on the consciousness of the working class, the, 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 the solidarity that arises um, uh, it, among people that work, that work and people that don't, people that own capital. And of course, the other aspect that's helped to undermine that in the United States has been racism, particularly the color issue, uh, very much like religion was used uh, in, in Northern Ireland between Catholics and Protestants. They were all the same color, so you couldn't, they couldn't use this, uh, the question of color or race. And that was a conscious decision in this country and the, the, the two volumes that Ted Allen wrote, Theodore Allen, on the invention of the white race is where people should go to really get a, an understanding of how conscious and how successful this was. So um, the thing is, is now it's all every, it, it, we all got to discuss race and this, that and the other, and we should be talking about it and so forth. And yes, we should be talking about it. The question is, though, is how should we be talking about it? And the, the thing is, is the narrative is controlled by the middle class and, of course, the, the ruling class, the big bourgeois and the people that control the media and everything else, the universities, which are just no, nothing but capitalist think tanks. And so uh, uh, um, the narrative is controlled by them. As workers, we have the organized work, the organized, the trade unions. The trade union leadership is completely absent in, 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 in helping us uh, strengthen working class solidarity, just the opposite. And so there's a, this onslaught against us and you can see it, it's it's frustrated me when i write some of the things for the for the blog you get people like you even watch bill burr the other day this comedian and it's very very funny but he's talking about racism in films and this that and the other and making him feel guilty and oh for god's sake enough already and the phoniness actually he, he points very clearly to the phoniness of their movies about racism about how blacks and whites interact and you'll never get a You'll never get anything from them, from Hollywood, from the media, for the universities in the main, as, as, in a dominant way. You'll get, they, there's ideas that are exposed there, but you'll never get this subject discussed or brought up without them trying in one way to divide and weaken unity between people. So when you see Bill Burr, he talks about, you know, why, where's the white guy? Where's the, it's always just the white guy. Somebody said to me about the Virginia colony and when the whites came, well, there were whites that came. The, the, the Virginia colony and the Virginia experiment was, finite, was chartered by the feudal aristocracy, by the king, and it was funded and under the direction of merchants, of the mercantile capitalists. Uh, probably, like one mer mer merchants, merchants probably had some things to do with it. So yeah, they had white skin, the people came here. But they were very different white people, just among any group of people. There's people in power, there's the ruling classes, and there's working classes. All black people aren't in the same position and so forth. So, so the thing is, because that class question is never mentioned, race or colour really is what it is, is always the dominant issue. I wrote a piece about Anne Hathaway, she's some actor, uh, Shakespeare's wife is the only Anne Hathaway I thought, think I knew. She wrote some things, felt bad, oh, 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 white people, that means you and me, and we must do this, we must cop to our privilege, we must say so and so, so and so. And who the hell is she? She's sailing around at the time. She had a boyfriend, a billionaire, on his yacht in the Mediterranean. I don't know any, any white paper like this. She's not. Don't, what was the old joke, you know, Lone Ranger and Tonto? What do you mean we, white man, you know? What do you mean me, millionaire film actor? Don't throw me in with you, or most white people in with you. We're nothing like you. 
But they do that for a reason. The class question's absent, so they, it's just we're all white people. Well, most people that are poor are white people. Most people in jail are probably white people. Most, most people on welfare are probably white people. Because there's more of us. Okay? So now the, the question of racism and colour division, the colour division, but, but uh, in general, was to undermine, and, and it's used to undermine, it's a key question here, to undermine workers' power, to undermine workers' unity. A, working, a guy I worked with one time, he, he, he used to get on my case about, what well, I always talk this, talk that, and then he, in, in a moment of truth he said to me, I know you're right, Rich, about what happens and this, that and the other. He said, but racism doesn't affect me. I said, well, Bob, I said, if you were in the South, wouldn't you earn lower wages than in the North? And he said, oh, of course. I said, well, that's because of racism. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, racism is stronger. Workers' organizations are weaker. Workers are more divided. The boss takes advantage of it, pays you less wages. So it does affect, it affects everybody. It affects us in so many ways. Of course, it affects us differently. But the problem with the way uh, uh, they're talking about it and why they use identity is to obscure this class question. Because n n neither the, the white middle class, who are more powerful than the, their black counterparts, because they're, one, they're white, same color as the ruling class, the majority of the ruling class, ruling class, they have more connections, they have more opportunities, they know more people with opportunities, so they, and they, of course you've got 300 years of marginalization, exclusion. For the, uh, the black capitalist class was never allowed capital. There was never allowed capital to develop, and it, it's it's weak. But since the civil rights movement, it, this is my view, they had to open some doors. They had to increase that layer of black, the black population that they can turn to the black working class and the revolutionary potential of the, the potential of the black working class that arises here and there, and say, look, shh, keep calm, don't worry, work through the system, look at me. But, but uh, look at me, a lot of the reason you can look at them was they assassinated, the ruling class assassinated two great leaders. They, 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 they assassinated a lot of the Panthers, a lot of the militant l leaders of the black civil rights movement. And the, the, the more cooperative ones they moved, they allowed them to come through certain doors. So those, that black middle class that exists now is, is, uh, is a product of the struggle of the, the working class, the black poor and black youth uh, uh, during, during the civil rights movement. So, so th but there is, though, that layer of black middle class or black petty bourgeois. But they're not as, as uh, they're, they're, they're competitors in a way with the white ones, but neither of them want workers' unity. What, what, because for them, it's, it's a game over. Workers' power is pa real power. You can see it everywhere. Even in, and, and, and what we must not lose track of because of this squashing of class solidarity with identity, by identity, is the movement that's taken place over the last few years in relation to um, the, the, the uh, uh, police violence, right? And if you think about it, some, uh, well, I, I'll finish that sentence first. If you look at the, uh, the, the, it's been a worldwide movement. They shot white people here. I've never seen this in my life. It was a multiracial movement begun Led, led by, in the main, the leadership was very, what, like in a lot of movements, that, that, that's how they, they're confused and everything else. They don't, they don't, we don't get to select the way it can it develops. And uh, it, was a, it was a very powerful movement, global movement against police brutality. So when, when people talk and they say about, like sometimes people say, well, you know, oh, why do white, what, somebody said to me, why do all those white people that voted for Trump? Well, 100 million people didn't vote. Let's not lose track of things here. We've had that movement, that 100 million that didn't vote, there's probably a lot of white people in there. But they want to make us think all the time. And who kills black people in the main? I'm not, don't, we should not fall for the trap of blaming going to black on black crime. It's fine to talk about black on black crime. From what I understand, most of the black youth killed is, are killed by the black people. But the way we approach that is we deal with why this crisis is there and why this madness is there. That, that we don't talk about that as a comparison. Most of the, when, when they talk about white people killing blacks, it's the security state. In the main, it's the security state. Sometimes it's easy to get despondent because I know black people and white people that mix and talk and get on with their lives and are supply to each other in the, in the main. It's the system that crushes us. 
And I, I put something up about critical race theory because I think all of this middle class yammer about uh, how to deal with race. And, and, and John McWhorter's right. When they, t Professor John McWhorter, whenever they want to talk about it, what it really means is white people have to apologize and, and black people have to sit and listen to it. Or white people have to say, uh, uh, white workers anyway, the middle class will apologize because they all guilt ridden. A lot of them feel very uh, sorry for themselves. Um, uh, it, it's not a dialogue at all. And so the, the, um, I don't know what exactly what white cr uh, race, uh, critical race theory is, but I did read a little bit about it where it said something about it's systematic rather than just acts of individual um, brutality or, or abuse or prejudice. And I think that's absolutely correct. It's the big problem. Racism is, or, or any marginalization, the big issue is this cut out from society, schools, education, opportunity, all of these things. The prisons are full of certain people, Muslims in France, for example, North Africans and so forth. So, so the thing is, the whole thing about uh, about obsession on whiteness and color and everything else doesn't matter. You, don't bring it up. It's not. It's not fine to bring it up. But off on what basis? That it was a social injection in society. That prior uh, 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 in the early colonial history, uh, 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 it was very very difficult. And, and people got along in the main. Of course, people are always different, and some people can hate people, other people because they're different. But in, but this was a conscious. It's a conscious effort. And our own history. What we're taught really is white capitalist history in this country, with a few concessions to the white working class. And the last thing I want to say about that. Look at what how about class uh, uh, solidarity and cl understanding our, our that we are a class with a distinct uh, interests of our own. George Washington, I said something about, it, about George Washington, and some guy who considers himself a leftist got a bit upset about it. Well, who was he? He came from a British, English, mercantile family. They were merchants, his family. They were probably landowners and had peasants. I don't know enough about them, but they were no friend of the worker. The British workers were driven off, the British peasants were driven off the land into workhouses, into uh, uh, um, begging and, uh, and vagrancy by these people, the wool merchants, and in the development of early capitalism. So what, what, what do I have in common with the Queen of England or George Washington? None. None at all. And in the early history of this country, they were no friend to working people either. So these are a few things of the way I, I feel we, we, we have to look as workers at, at, um, at this question of racism, how we combat it and how we take it up. What is it? It's a means to divide us. How do we fight it? We, we, we fight for things that unite us. Right, the, the DSA refused to have uh, Adolf Reed, uh, uh, is it Adolf Reed, uh, 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 speak at, um, at uh, I don't think his name's Adolf some, somehow, uh, the, the professor, the left-wing professor, because uh, he criticised uh, identity being too put forward too much uh, that did not divide, uh, that, um, and doesn't allow us to focus on the class issues. I mean, that, that's a pathetic example of it. I remember when I ran for Oakland City Council, and it was a $10 an hour minimum wage, it was 1996, and I was in, an, a, 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 in Fruitvale, and I was talking about the need for it. And it, the room was divided. It wasn't divided by gays and lesbians and non-lesbians, events black and white, events transgender and this, and, 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 and all these various identities that people have. The people, that, the, 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 the small business people and people, uh, capitalists, uh, and, the, and those who made profit their, their means of subsistence was the hiring of others and, and, and the profit of capital. They didn't want to pay $10 an hour, and all the workers wanted to get $10 an hour. It was a simple division along class lines, and that's what they want to undermine. So these are a few thoughts I had, because somebody asked me about my thoughts on it today. A working, working person, I'm not interested in polemics with lefty types, that just is a sort of a macho game. Uh, um, if, if any of you got would like to comment on this, you want, to, want me to comment more about it, or send, a, send me uh, um, the blog, which is, I'll, I'll be checking the email, if you want to send me, what, what, what's your take on this, I'd like to do that, it would help me, it would help me think about it, and um, the, the email address actually is we underscore no underscore what's underscore up at yahoo.com. I say it out loud because I don't have the skills necessarily to put the right text in. Anyway, these are a few thoughts on that. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Please send us an email and on other subjects, help me think about these things. I'm not in the workplace anymore. It's harder for me. So I'd appreciate it, okay? Richard Meller, Facts for Working People. Thanks a lot.